how human mobility plays a role in malaria transmission. There really is value in pulling in new sources of information in order to tackle vector-borne disease. And so we started to think about what are the other new sources of information we can work with that people didn't have before that could help them. led us to then a new project. These days, almost everybody has a smartphone. Your smartphone has a GPS in it and knows exactly where you are. So we can, in principle, use smartphones now to track people's location over time. Now that's interesting for malaria because it turns out that with malaria, mosquitoes spread, spread malaria, but people also spread malaria. Right? Because we infect the mosquitoes, and the mosquitoes infect us. So what can happen with malaria is that somebody can go to a place that has a lot of malaria and get infected and go back to a place that doesn't have much, and then it spreads there. And this especially happens in areas where malaria is low. And Thailand is now trying to move towards malaria elimination. Our colleagues in the Faculty of Tropical Medicine and particularly in the Center for Biomedical and Public Health Informatics, Biofix, have been carrying out a study funded by the U.S. National Institute of Health to monitor malaria in northern Thailand in Dak province. And uh, they wanted to have a way to track people's movement so we could start to understand how is that related to malaria infection. So what we did was to partner with the University of Bremen, which is the partner in the lab we have, of course, and they have built an application that runs on a smartphone. This application just records the person's location every hour, and then that data gets uploaded to a server. So now we have a database where right now we have 200 people being tracked, and we're going to increase that to about 400. Uh, every single hour and we'll track them for one year. The other thing we have is we have their health records, so we know if they got malaria or not, and the two are linked. Their phone and their health record are linked. So now we can start to analyze what's the relationship between how people move and if they get malaria or not. In the past, we used simple questionnaire survey that will require the recall of the people, so the information is not that valid. So this application will track um, uh, population movement individually and in real time, so we know exactly how people move across the area. So the results from um, this population tracking or population movement, we know the patterns of uh, movement of people in the area. This will help us to design appropriate control programs so that if we know where exactly people uh, spend time on the risk area or whether they get the malaria infection from you know, Thailand side or Myanmar side. So we will be able to design appropriate control measures to um, detect these people or try to reduce the risk among these people in the area. But the next big step is to start to integrate the techniques. Um, so it's not just one technique here, one technique there, but we use them together. The dengue risk mapping, now we can say where are the areas of highest risk, right? And if we can track mobility, now we know are people spending their time in the areas of highest risk at the times when that mosquito bites. So now we can start to combine the two. Mm -hmm. 